All right, guys. It is Saturday, May seventh, two thousand and twenty-two, at ten twenty-three p.m. Happy Mother's Day to you guys tomorrow. I hope you have a beautiful day. And I'm sorry that now comes the doom and gloom news. <laughs> it's like Happy Mother's Day, doom and gloom stuff. All right, all right. Let's start with dailyverses.net verse of the day. We got humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. Proverbs 22.4 Alright, let's start off with strange sounds. We have a mega drought. The two largest reservoirs in California are already at critical low levels and the dry season is just starting. Let's take a look at this article about the mega drought. Mega drought, the two largest reservoirs in California are already at critically low levels and the dry season is just starting. Against the backdrop of the water crisis in the Colorado River Basin, where the country's largest reservoirs are pluming, excuse me, are plunging at an alarming rate, California's two largest reservoirs, Shasta Lake and Lake Oroville, are facing a similar struggle. Years of low rainfall and snowpack are more intense heat waves have fed directly into the state's multi-layer, unrelenting drought conditions rapidly draining statewide reservoirs. According to this week's report from the U.S. Drought Monitor, the two major reservoirs are at critically low levels at the point of the year when they should be the highest. So this week, Lake Shasta is only 40% of its total capacity, the lowest it has ever been in the start of May since record keeping began in 1977. Meanwhile, further south, Lake Orville is at 55% of its capacity, which is 70% of where it should be around this time on average. Shasta Lake is the largest reservoir in the state and the cornerstone of California's Central Valley Project, a complex of water system that is made of 19 dams and reservoirs, as well as more than 500 miles of canals, stretching from Redding to the north all the way south to the drought-stricken landscapes of Bakersfield. Shasta's lake water levels are now less than half of historical average. According to the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, only agriculture customers who are senior water right holders and some irrigation districts in the eastern San Joaquin Valley will receive the Central Valley's project water deliveries this year. So they're anticipating that the Sacramento Valley alone, over 350,000 acres of farmland, will be followed. That is a lot, guys. Over 350,000 acres of farmland will be followed, uh, said Mary Lee Neck, the Public Affairs Officer of the Bureaus of California's Great Basin Region. For perspective, it's an area larger than Los Angeles. Cities and towns that receive Central Valley Project water supply, including Silicon Valley communities, have been reduced to health and safety needs only. That is a lot at stake with the plummeting supply, said Jessica Gable with Food and Water Watch, a nonprofit advocacy group focused on food and water security as well as climate change. The impending summer heat and the water shortages, she said, will hit California's most vulnerable populations, particularly those in farming communities. Alright guys, so California's most vulnerable populations, particularly those in farming communities. That means that food could take a hit if farming communities will not get water. So that is that's a dangerous sign. It says communities across California are going to suffer this year during drought and it's just a question of how much more they suffer. It's usually the most vulnerable communities who are going to suffer the worst so usually the Central Valley comes to mind because this is already an arid part of the state with most, most of the state's agriculture and most of the state's energy development which are both water intensive industries. Only 5% of water will be supplied. So that is pretty intense, guys. Look at this whole region of of the map uh, with extreme drought and severe drought. That's the orange and reds. That is so sad. Oh, okay, let's go back to the Strange Sounds page. We have, this is why their coffee is so addictive. Swiss police seize 500 kilograms of cocaine at an espresso factory. That is quite crazy. Uh, also, May 22nd, the
the World Health Organization plans to strip 194 nations and the U.S. of sovereignty. Let's take a look at what this says. It says the WHO is attempting to push through changes to a treaty that would give the global control over health worldwide. This helps fulfill some of the goals of the WF's reset. It is a massive power grab that takes away a nation's sovereignty rights to determine its own health standards. A decision that will be made to a vote on May 22nd through the 28th at the World Health Organization or the World Health Assembly. Two-thirds of the Senate does not have to vote for it. It's a rule change, but it is a devastating one. In the new video, the post Marino interviews Shabam Pamesa Mohammed, a member of the steering committee of the World Council of Health, who points out of the treaty gives the WHO. And in ordinate amount of power to make decisions in certain countries as to how people live and how they deal with pandemics from lockdowns to mandates over treatment. I'll leave you guys a link to this article so you guys can check that out for yourselves but that seems creepy. Alright next Zero Hedge. We have Top tra Tractor Maker warns ransomware attack has adversely affected production so AGCO is still investigating the extent of the attack. All right. Also, criminal, inhumane, and unethical. The EU passes resolution condemning Chinese regime forced organ harvesting. We need actions on China, not calls. China heard these calls for two decades and ignored them. So apparently, uh, they're protesting China stop murdering for organs. That is very, very creepy, guys. I'll leave you guys a link to the Zero Hedge. You guys can check out the article. Let's see. FDA investigating reports of COVID relapses following use of Pfizer pill. A surprising rebound of viral loads and symptoms. Hmm. All right. And also poor rail service threatens U.S. economy shippers tell federal regulators. The nation's supply chains are in dire situation today. Because of this, it is not getting better. It's getting worse. Let's take a look at this article. It says, Poor rail service threatens the U.S. economy. Shippers tell federal regulators. So utilities are worried that the slowdown in coal deliveries could threaten the U.S. electricity supply and destabilize the power grid. Chemical producers say erratic rail service has forced them to curtail production of essentials like chlorine used to treat public drinking water systems and the plastics used in medical products. And one of the nation's largest retailers of diesel fuel, renewable diesel ethanol and diesel exhaust fluids, says Union Pacific's plans to cut its shipments by 50% will create fuel shortages, bring trucking to a halt, and raise prices at the pump. That's pretty much shutting down the country. If you shut down the rails and it cuts down fuel shortages, excuse me, it cuts down 50% of the fuel, it brings truck into a halt and raises prices at the pump, you're pretty much shutting down the country because if trucks can't deliver goods uh, to the stores, people will starve. This is insane. It says those were among the shipper concerns raised on Wednesday during a second day of hearings on railroad service problems that have been created by a shortage of train crews. The nation's supply chains are in dire situation today because of this, and it's not getting better. It's getting worse. And the longer it goes on, the worse it's going to get. Ross Corthorl, chair of the National Industrial Transportation League's Rail Committee, told the Surface Transportation Board, he adds, I don't want to be doomsday, but it's critical to our national security at some point in time. We have to be able to move commodities, and it's becoming more and more challenging every day. Shippers complained about the lengthy delays, erratic service, and miss switches forced them to curtail and halt production or shift some shipments to more excessive trucks. Some products, such as chlorine and coal, have no alternative to rail. We need to move coal, and right now it's just not happening, says Kate Mills, a lawyer of the National Mining Association. So I'll leave you guys the link to this article. This is quite important. If it's true that the poor rail service is threatening the U.S. economy, I made a video earlier about 
um, truckers being in trouble because of them not getting parts and having difficulty uh, with parts because of the shipments. And this is something else with the trains. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Hit like and subscribe for more news. And happy Mother's Day, guys. See you guys next time. God bless.